I am excited today to be taking an in-depth look at the just released Luminar Neo. Now, it's not the full version of Luminar Neo, rather it's the early access version. But this is a version that if you've ordered Luminar Neo, you can get your hands on. Now, I know this comes as a bit of surprise. They've been saying that Luminar Neo is not coming until February. Well, this isn't the whole program, but it's most of it. And I'm gonna walk you through what it can do, show you how to get it, and show you a few things to keep your eyes on. So real quickly, a little bit about myself. My name's Rich Harrington, and I've actually co-authored just about, in fact, I think every version of the Luminar user manual. And I've worked on a lot of official training through the years on Luminar, just to help people learn a lot more about the program. I am a working photographer as well as a video director, and I publish a website called photofocus.com. I've also worked on a lot of different software features through the years, helping design the tools and some of the specific approaches that we use with these. So you might have seen me pop up from time to time. One thing clear, this is an unofficial video. Now, some of you have seen me do official things in the past. I've done a lot of work on Luminar through the years. This is not official. Rather, I'm just doing this video independently to walk you through everything. However, I will say I feel pretty good about all the information I'm sharing with you. I made sure it's accurate. I downloaded the exact same build that you can get access to using the exact same steps that you would use. Rather than work with a pre-release of the pre-release, I'm working with a thing that's live, what you can get your hands on. And anytime I hit an issue or a question, I verified it with sources, reread the FAQs, talked to the team behind it, made sure that the info I'm giving you is accurate. So while it's unofficial, I've done my homework and I think it's gonna help you out. So let's get out of the way. One of the most important things, what is Luminar Neo? Well, Luminar Neo is a brand new application that's expected to be shipping in February. However, the team at Skylum has released an early access version. Now, Luminar Neo is really cool. It's designed to be a creative image editor and it uses AI technology, meaning that a lot of the tools in it have artificial intelligence or machine learning to partially automate or make complex tasks easier. There's still a bunch of manual controls and I'm gonna show you most of the tools that are in Luminar today to give you a good overview of how to use these AI and traditional tools in a normal editing workflow. And Skylum says that this really brings it all together and it's designed to empower you to help you be creative and really enjoy the process of editing photos. Now, the word Neo is really intriguing. It basically means new, recent, or revived. So Luminar Neo builds upon what's happened in the past, but it does add new technologies with a whole new engine, which processes the photos and really changes how this works a bit. So what exactly is early access anyways? I thought that you said that Luminar Neo wasn't coming until February. Well, it's not coming until at the end of winter, but this is an early version released, so if you pre-ordered Luminar Neo, you could start to try it out and actually offer some feedback to the team. Early access started December 28th. Again, I just downloaded this, spent all day working with it, and I want to give you my first thoughts. It's open if you pre-ordered Luminar, you had to actually have pre-ordered it, or you could still pre-order it and get access to the early access version. And it's really for those who want to help shape the product. There's a feedback button built right in. There's a survey that's generated that goes right to the engineering team and product managers so they can review your thoughts about the program. And you're able to submit that feedback until January 20th. So this is a chance to really get hands on for about three and a half, four weeks and let the team know what you're thinking. Now, those who offer up the most insightful feedback, they promise they're going to send you the thank you gift. Don't know what that is, but that's cool. A big thing to keep in mind, this is not, and I have to say this a few times, not, not the final official release. So your 30 day money back guarantee doesn't start with this version. This is just designed so you can try it out and let the team know your thoughts. So when you download it, what are you gonna get? Well, there's three new technologies that are ready to go in this build. It includes the remove dust spots feature and the ability to relight photos. This is the one I'm most excited about and the ability to remove power lines. They also identify that in the main release, which is slated currently for February, you'll have the ability to use presets, layers, overlays, and the new Luminar Share application. 
Now, if you don't know what most of those things are, don't worry. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you an in-depth sneak peek. Think of it as a trailer of what you can expect with those other new features so that you can really know what's coming. And there's two more major technologies, mask AI and portrait background removal that are expected to be in a free update called update one company has not set a date on when that is, but they've been pretty transparent so far and are keeping people up to speed on what to expect. So I'm sure once we hit version one, they'll give us a guesstimate on the timeline for update one. Now, a couple more things to keep in mind. Skylum states that if you download this, you agree to give feedback. Now, obviously they can't force you to give feedback, but the whole purpose here is feedback and that's built right into the application. Now, you also acknowledge that this is an early access version, so it's not fully stable and it may not match the final version. This is built right in before you can download. I know most people have okayitis and they just skip past this, but it is right there before you hit download. So do read what you are agreeing to. It's always a good idea. And again, it's version 0.9.1. Normally software when it's released for the first time is version 1.0. So you see we're close, but we're not quite there yet. This is again a chance for feedback. And if you want to send them that feedback, just click the little talk bubble up in the upper left corner and it'll open up a chance for you to submit a survey or any of your thoughts about the program. And it is important, please submit that feedback so the team knows what's on your mind. All right, how do you get the early access version? Well, pretty straightforward. Step one, pre-order Luminar Neo. Now, if you haven't pre-ordered it, you won't get early access. You need to actually have this in your account and activate it using your name and email address. Otherwise, you won't be able to run it. If you need to pick up a copy of Luminar Neo, I invite you to visit my website that's called Learn Luminar. It's filled with tons of tutorials by me and my friends and it will help you get the most out of both Luminar Neo and Luminar AI or Luminar 4, some of the earlier versions of this. And it's all free up there to learn about it, so no cost to pick up these tutorials and learn extra stuff, but I would appreciate it if you feel free to pick it up there because not only do you get a discount, but we include a special bonus when you pre-order. We'll be sending you a bundle of some extra stuff when the software finally ships in February. And step two, download it. Now, this is a little tricky, so I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to do it. You may have also received an email. Just follow those instructions, but here's the short version. You're gonna to go to skylum.com and click in the upper right corner. This is where you'll access your software. Now, if you're not logged in, you'll have to create an account. Just create a free account and use the name and email address that you did when you purchased. Once you are logged in, you'll go to the My Software section and it's right there, probably at the top of your list. You'll see how many activations you have. You can purchase additional activations if you want to run it on a lot of machines and you'll be able to pull this down. Remember, if you don't have an account, you can't see it. So you have to have actually pre-ordered this and have it in your system. Somebody might give you a download link, but it's not going to work because it actually has to be activated using your Skylum account. So sign in with the same email address. Also, for Windows users, there's instructions in there. Please read them. You have to make sure that you've got the Visual C++ redistribution installed. And if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card, please update to the latest drivers. Otherwise, you're gonna have some issues. And you should do those updates before you install Luminar Neo. Also, keep in mind, Luminar Neo can live on the same system as Luminar AI or Luminar 4. You do not need to uninstall those apps to try this one out. In fact, don't. Those apps have currently more functionality, but this is a chance to try out some of the new tools. So just leave them both on your system. No harm. It's going to work great. All right. So let's jump into the program and how do you load things? Now, I'm working on a real world system here. You can see that this is one of the newer MacBook Pros and uh, we're using an M1 Max chip. I've got plenty of RAM. You could, of course, run this on a less robust system, but I wanted you to see how long it takes to do things. And here I'm using a pretty high-end MacBook. But again, you can use any type of computer. This will just give you an idea of the system I'm running on. And I'm going to let you see things as they happen in real time. I won't speed things up or cut out gaps like a lot of folks do. And we're going to start by adding some photos. 
You can do this a couple of ways. Under the file menu, you can edit a single image. This will let you navigate and pick one picture. Or you can add a folder that has multiple images in it. Either way is going to work. Let's just select this here. I got a folder with a bunch of content and I'll add it. And this gives you an idea on what it takes to import everything. So here we're bringing in a pretty big folder. I really like the speed there. It was able to draw all those previews, get everything loaded. You'll notice that everything within those subfolders stayed organized. And it was able to bring in almost 2,000 photos in just a couple of seconds. That is fast. And compared to a lot of other tools on the market, way faster. So kudos there to the team for making that import experience really, really quick. And this gets you up and running right away. This is actually accessing the material on your hard drive. Now, I'm going to be using a variety of photos here. Most of them come from the Luminar team. These are some of the test images and demo images. So you've seen these being shown off. I want to show you how some of them were made. Plus, I've also got a few of my own photos thrown in here so we can walk through some different things. Let's talk about the editing interface. This is one of the biggest changes and it's a little confusing. Now, once you get your head wrapped around it, it's no big deal, but it's gonna feel different if you're used to tools like Lightroom and certainly Luminar AI or Luminar 4. Things have moved and the way that edits are applied is different. What you're gonna notice is a very important tab, tools and edits. Tools are where you can see all of your tools and modify them. So you can actually pick a tool, make its settings apply. But once you click on a new tool, then it's added to the edits list. And if you want to make changes to it, you're going to have to switch tabs. So tools are the tools you can pick from. Edits are the actual changes you've made. And it's important to know how to flip between those. So let's go ahead and pick a picture here and do some actual editing. Let's go ahead and open up the photo. Notice here I can double click and I get the image, press the space bar, it zooms back in. That's nice and responsive. I like the animation, but when we're ready to edit, I just click the edit tab here. Now on the right are all the tools. This again is the list of what's available. We're going to go through a lot of these tools in a moment, but let me give you the high level. Crop AI used to be called composition AI and it will still allow for suggested cropping. Here it applied a little bit more of the rule of thirds and because this was offset, it's just suggesting shifting it to the right for balance. And then let's take advantage here of enhance AI and we can make an adjustment. Now I want you to notice that when I close a tool, it's applied and added to the edits list here. Now this is where it can get a touch confusing. You notice that I just used the enhance tool and the develop tool. Well, I'm going to go back to the enhance tool because I want to tweak something. Notice everything's been zeroed out. What? This is a change guys. This is the new engine. Each tool is applied automatically in the background when you use it. So if you switch tools, that tool is applied and you go to the next tool. I know a little confusing. Hear me out. So if I go back here to the edits tab, I can see the two tools that I've used so far, enhancing and develop crop is up here and it's still live. So if you decide to make a crop, you can do that and change it. And you'll notice that nothing was lost. You still have all your edits. So cropping is non-destructive. You can tweak it at any time, but all the rest of your edits here are being applied as you go. So that's an important thing to keep an eye on. Now you might be wondering why, why this change? Well, it's all about speed. Each tool gets processed when you apply it. So when you click on a new tool, it means that the current tool is activated and applied. It is possible though to use any tool in any order. So if you want to swap this out, it opens up new things. Now in the past when using tools like Luminar AI or Luminar 4, you couldn't really control the order of the tools as much. Luminar Neo gives you total control over that so you can run them in a specific order. Maybe you want to apply a lookup table and then do your develop module. You can. This gives you flexibility. Or maybe you want to put a little sharpness in up front, make your adjustments, and then apply additional sharpening at the end. You can use the sharpening tool twice. It's all that flexible. But what it means here is that you have to pay attention to that edit section so you know what's going on. It's effectively modular. So if we go back in here and we want to say sharpen a little bit, 
let's just zoom in and I'm going to take advantage here of some sharpness and we'll bring out just a little bit more aggressiveness and then I decide to add in some structure there we go notice when I go back to details everything's been zeroed out again this is a list of tools to see what you did you have to go to the edits tab so just click on over and you'll see everything so if you change your mind you want to go back you can jump in make your change maybe I want a little more boost to enhance feel free to jump up to another tool again make any overall changes that you feel like and then you've got a choice here you can go in a whole new direction you can discard steps if you don't want them so if I decided that yeah maybe I didn't want this details I can reset it but I can keep structure so it is a non-destructive destructive editor meaning that each change is applied as you go but you don't actually lose the ability to undo or switch so if you feel like maybe you want to explore uh, a particular creative style here let's go to mood you'll find a bunch of different lookup tables available right now the previews aren't working that's one of the known issues but you can go in here and apply a mood or a feeling adjust the strength of that and you'll find lots of different options here that you can use just to stylize the photo let's scroll here and put in a little bit of a creative vignette as well awesome and if I want to see my before and after I could just click the compare button all right tools is where you see your tools edits is where you can modify your tools after you've applied them one at a time I know bit of a change but keep that in mind as you start to explore the new editing interface all right let's go forward I told you there was three major pieces of new technology in this build you might have seen some sneak peeks of these let me walk you through what you can actually do with these and get your own hands on it so there is some new technology here the first one that I just love is called relight AI and it's all about creative lighting now keep in mind that this can be combined with other technology like accent AI I don't recommend making relight do all of the work it's not as much a corrective filter as it is a stylizing filter to adjust the lighting in the scene this is going to allow you to get some new creative outcomes so like we see here we didn't quite have the balance right but by using a depth map luminar can look inside your photo and see in three dimensions it can tell what's closer to the camera what's farther away the shape of the room and then you get the ability to make changes and you can actually adjust the lighting in the scene so here we put a little more light on the foreground object and pull down the background objects which is pretty cool and so this gives you that flexibility so you can actually go in and make the changes the amount is going to be the global sort of change to the relighting effect you can then adjust this and this is going to affect the foreground objects then the far slider is going to be useful for controlling the background halo kind of wraps the light and then depth will let you move things around let's go back to our catalog here and I've got some images tagged for relighting and we'll show you what this can do let's go ahead and take a couple of different scenes here I really like this image and we'll explore it but then we'll take a look at a second example with some other backlight problems now this tool will work on landscapes portraits combo images travel photos it works with pretty much any picture once you've got a picture selected just click over to the edit tab and remember tools is where you see everything that you can choose from now, I'm a big fan of using the enhance section first you can use the develop module that's fine but enhance AI goes a long way to balance out the scene and I think that worked pretty well again we can preview and see that effect so we got good color we got good tone but we don't have the right lighting in this scene there's a lot of backlight the inside is a little dark and dingy I want to fill that in so let's come down to the creative section here for relight and watch what we can do we can adjust the brightness near the brightness far and the depth there we go notice we can put a little bit of brightness in we can take the brightness far down 
and adjust the depth to move that through the scene. Let's put a little more light in there inside. With the advanced settings there, there's that de-halo, and that's gonna help wrap the light depending upon where you place it. You can see there just making a subtle change. Let's pull that down a little bit more. And de-halo is pretty subtle as it goes around the edges. I'm gonna pull that light there. I like how it's wrapping around her face. And you've also got separate color temperature control. So if you find yourself wanting to warm up the car or cool it down, notice how you can independently adjust the color temperature of the scene for the things that are closer to the camera or further away. It's really cool. Now, once I like that and I'm all set, I can go on to another tool. So one of my favorite ones is Super Contrast. This gives you the ability to independently control things like the highlights and the shadows with way more robust controls than you'll find in a traditional develop module. So let's go ahead here and put a little bit more contrast there into the highlights. Look at how it brought back some of the detail in the clouds and I can shift that around to better define it. A little bit more contrast there in the midtones and let's open up those shadows a bit. Super useful. Love what that lets us do. Plus, while we're here, Color Harmony gives us similar levels of control over color. So I like what this is doing, but I think I wanna make a few adjustments here. Put a little bit of contrast in the color, and I'm gonna define that for the golds. So look at how that's gonna target the golds in the scene, and let me enhance just those. I love what it does to the hat. Now, you're thinking, well, maybe you wanna do the golds and the greens. No big deal. You could just apply this tool by closing it. You see that it's actually applied there, right? So we've got our color harmony. Now I can go and open it back up. And look, we could do it again. Color contrast amount, and I can go and target the greens. And so now I can use a second instance of that tool on the greens themselves, which is cool. And if I realize there's a little bit of color cast, I could just switch on over to the color tool and resolve it there. There we go, remove color cast. I like what's happened there. And again, everything's in the edits. You can see that we have color, two instances of color harmony, being able to use that color contrast tool twice. That's something you could never do before. So now you can actually stack filters or effects, use them as many times as you want, which is cool. But just understand that when you click on the tool to close it, it is applied or if you switch to a new tool, it is applied. You adjust it by switching from the Tools tab to the Edits tab, and that gives you the ability to jump backwards. So, looking at that relight there, I like what it's doing. I can go through each of these. I think this is pretty solid. I just wanna put a little more contrast in and balance out those shadows, lift them a little more, and I'll just jump forward, and I'm good. I see my edits, and I can go back to the catalog, and it's gonna be stored there, there's your edits. Now don't freak out in the catalog view. If you go back and it hasn't updated, it takes a second for the thumbnail to refresh. So it is there and when you open it up, you'll see it. You know that the image has been edited. If you see this little two lines here with the little controls, that means that you've edited that photo, makes it simple. All right, let's keep going forward. Speaking of browsing, we can also change the size. So we've got some larger pictures. Let's switch over to a landscape photo, and then how about a tough backlight photo? I'm gonna come in here and use a landscape that has a little bit of depth to it. This time I'm gonna take one of my own. And uh, we had some sunset photos here. I like what we're working with. I'm gonna jump into edit. And there's some good depth here, but I'd like to control the lighting a little bit more. It was a really bright, sunny day. so. Start with tools, and again, I'm always a huge fan of Enhance AI. This lets you balance out the color in the scene nicely and target your skies to really bring them out intelligently. I like this, it's going a long way. This photo's close, but read light's gonna help. So we come down here for creative lighting, and we're gonna take a look. Brightness near is gonna control the front of that scene. So this allows me to put some more light in, and then I can use the depth slider to control where that falls in the scene. Let's crank that up really high. 
and notice how it moves to the scene in three dimensions. Cool. Brightness far, I can knock that down. And then looking at my color here, I could adjust the color temperature for what's further away, warming it up just a little bit so it's not so blue. I like it. Let's jump down creatively and toss in a bit of a mystical glow. It's one of my favorite filters. It's awesome for just adding a gentle glow and highlight. And we can see that on and off. Note, you can toggle the individual effect. There we go. That looks good. A little bit less. If you don't want to apply it to a specific area, tools do have masks. But one thing to keep in mind with masks right now, just the paintbrush masks are working. We'll talk more about that later. Again, early access version. But with the eraser tool here, I can subtract so that that glow is not applied to the center of the flower here. There we go. And so that just isolated the results. It's really cool how you can precisely brush in any tool. Some tools have adjustment brushes. Every filter here in Luminar, with the exception of like the develop module and a couple of distortion tools. So almost every filter has its own local mask, giving you precise control like you see. All right, that's very cool. Let's finish this out. And I'll just put a little vignette on there. And I like that I can choose the subject to place it accurately. And let's just put a little blend on there. Gentle feather. I like it. Before and after. Again, everything's up there in the Edits tab. And if you realize you want to make a change, no big deal. Come on over and you can just refine what that looks like. And when you switch back, you see that the rest of the edits were applied. It goes back through the list. So you could jump back to any tool and tweak it and then return where you left off. Cool. Let's do one more example. We'll tackle something with pretty tough backlight. Now, I was actually at this shoot. This is a wonderful photo from Jessica Kubesi, and I worked with her on this shoot. And I want to show you what we can do to bring these images to life. So we'll jump on into edit here. We had a tough backlit situation. Again, remember that Enhance AI is an absolute workhorse. It's going to allow you to really fill in some of those missing details. And I like how that brought back the right balance. But while the exposure is evened out, we need a little bit more on the face. So we'll come down here to relight and adjust the brightness near. Give it a second to calculate the 3D depth map and it adds in the light. You can use the depth slider here to control where it falls. There we go. I like it. And if you actually needed it, you can close that and reopen and add a second instance of this. So if you want a little bit more light near, with a slightly different depth position, you can do that. Notice I just used the Relight AI tool two times in a row. You can absolutely refine. You wanna go back and put a little bit more in with Enhance, just jump up to Enhance AI and you can add it. So it's really cool and flexible here. You'll see over in Tools that I've actually applied those multiple times in the order that I specified, which is pretty cool. It gives me some nice flexibility. Again, if need be, we could jump in here and even change the profile. So I can go in and access my camera's portrait profile, for example, shifting the colors around a little bit, maybe refine the smart contrast there just to even out the scene a little and put a gentle lift in the shadows. Now, step back through and I could see the tools that I've been reusing and I don't have to be quite as aggressive with Relight. Nice. And there we go. Plus, I'll just take out that little hint of a color cast, jump on into the color tool here, and just pull down the remove color cast slider. And with HSL, I see just a hint of blue. So I'll switch on over to saturation, and I'm gonna pull down the cyans and the blues just a bit to balance that scene. And you can see how we easily eliminate that color cast. Very, very cool. Luminar Neo gives you the ability to remove dust spots with one click. Now, you can still refine it if you want, but it is a straightforward way to clean up a dusty image sensor or if there was particles on the back of the lens. 
you shoot with a mirrorless camera or a DSLR and you were a little sloppy when you did the lens change, this just cleans things up. What's cool about it is it will automatically remove evidence of lens and sensor dust from a picture. And it even works on scanned photos. So you can see on the left, a really heavy bad problem. It's able to pick it up. It's just an intelligent erase. And it looks at the image and finds the problems and blends the pixels out. So this will happen a lot as you get dust or other debris on the camera sensor or the lens element, particularly with removable lenses. And they can be really tedious and challenging to remove. But Luminar can automatically see them and fix them. All you have to do is click a button. So you see the spots? One click takes them out. It's very cool. All right, let's put this tool to good use and see how it works. I'm going to open up one of my photos here. In this case, it's the Seattle skyline. And you see I've got a little dust at the top of the frame there. Pretty easy problem, although here we have a little damage on it as well. So let's go ahead and take care of that. I'll jump into the Edit tab and take a look at Tools, and you'll see that we can fix this. I'm just going to use Enhance and Accent here just to bring that out. And I see those problem pixels. So if I jump over to the Erase tool, I can click Remove Dust Spots. It analyzes the photo and will create new pixels based on the surrounding ones. It took it out, which is cool. If you have areas though that are small that it's not sure what to do of, like in this case, I can't tell what that is. Looks like a little bit of a damaged pixel, but it could have been an airplane. I can still manually brush over things and click erase and take those out as well. And notice that everything works together. So if we come back down here to enhance and we decide to make some tweaks and we go back in, it's still gonna properly calculate that and you see that it actually took it out. So you might have to zoom around and give it a second, but it does reapply that edit, and then you are free to go on to another tool and make your improvements. Let's tackle another problem here, give you a few more examples of these. Now, this image here is a raw file, and I just wanna walk it through. Notice with the edit module, I can take advantage of things and actually work with this. Let's come back to the develop module here. I'd already started playing with it. And I can switch, dial in the right base exposure, and kind of get it in the way that I feel that this should look. We definitely have some dust spots there and some small details that I don't want erased. So I'll come to Erase Tool, click the Remove Dust Spots, let it analyze, and you're going to see that it picks them all up pretty quickly. But what it did not do was remove these little areas and small details. Now here, it's not sure if that's dust or not, but you can always manually brush over things and click erase and take it out. So you can still have those precise controls. This is just a real big time saver. It's designed to get rid of things for you as you're working. Here I was at Joshua Tree and a bit rushed, and you'll see as I start to work with this that it has a problem. Now, if you're trying to use the develop module and nothing is happening, this particular image is a DNG file. This is one of those things that's not quite working yet in the early access version. Some DNG formats are not fully supported. They are supposed to get fixed, but just don't get freaked out if that happens. What you can still do here is take advantage of enhance, and then you can then use the develop module if you need to refine that a bit. So there we go. And I definitely see some problem areas there. You can see a hair and some dust spots. Jump on into the erase tool and click remove dust spots and it's gonna get the dust spots and that little hair that was on the sensor there. Took them right out, we're good to go. We can then still use the other tools again, in this case, multiple passes with Enhance AI. And I'll do a little color pass here and I'm just gonna pull down the cyan tones a little bit for saturation and refine them with a little bit of luminance there. I like that, good. And let's touch the blues just a little bit brighter. Nice, able to make all those changes and you see it quickly comes to light. So all those things are non-destructive. You'll see them in the edits tab. And if you need to, you can revisit. So if you wanted to tweak the develop module, maybe put a little less contrast in there, open it up. When you go forward, it's going to still apply that tool. 
you see it's able to catch up and then reruns that tool and when we go back all those other edits were still applied so while it processes each tool one step at a time you could still step backwards and make a change and then have it fast forward through the rest of your settings all right you see this remove dust removal what about power lines depending upon where you live remove power lines may be a big deal or not so much of a big deal certain parts of the world have power lines everywhere and while you might not have them in your neighborhood, depending upon the state or the country you visit, you can see a lot of power lines that just get in the way of a beautiful scene. So they can be running through your photo and they're distracting. Sure, you could paint them out and erase them and clone them, but that's a lot of work. This is designed to automatically analyze the picture and remove them, but you still have manual controls if there's areas you wanna to touch up. So it's designed to be able to look at a photo and with one click, take out the power lines. It's very cool. Remember, this can be done another way with old school technology like brushes and erasing and cloning and stamping, but it's just time consuming. This is designed to really speed it up so that you don't abandon a picture because you don't want to spend a half hour removing power lines. Now, before the cranky ones of you out there go, just move the camera. Of course, if you can move the camera position or change your body, do so. But there's been lots of times where the sun is setting and I can't hike down to get around an obstruction or make a change, or maybe it's blocked off. Or the view that you have from the top of a building is the view that you have, and you can't really be hanging off the side of the building to get around a power line. So while I am always a fan of getting it right in camera, sometimes you can't, and that's where this tool comes in. So let's jump in here and take a look at some power line images, and I'll show you a few different ones. Here's that one that you saw the demo image for. I'll just open it up and then I'll take a look at a couple of my own pictures. We'll jump into edits and the erase tool and just click remove power lines. It analyzes the image and we'll remove them. There we go. And you see that it took it out. Now, if there's any areas that it misses or it's confused on, you can refine it. I'll go ahead and toggle that on and off. And I see that it did great, but it just didn't get this little bit here. No big deal. You can still paint over that area and erase, and it will take it out. And so if needed, just paint over any details and let it analyze the scene and fill it in. There we go. And so I was able to do that touch up. Maybe there's something that you don't want, even though it's not a power line, Again, the Content Aware Erase tool will let you choose unwanted objects. There we go. And then just click Erase, and it will take those out of the scene. The Clone and Stamp tool is not a part of the build, but that is coming, so you will have Clone and Stamp and Dodge and Burn. That's one of those things that's not included yet in the early access build, but that worked out nicely so we can get a clean scene. All right, let's take a look at another one here. I'm gonna go to one of my pictures. Let's come down here. Open this up. And I'm just gonna click Edit. And I'll go to the Erase tool and choose Remove Power Lines. It analyzes the photo and removes them. And did a really nice job. Now, of course, you still have poles, so you may want to clone some of those out, or maybe you don't. But it definitely cleaned up the image. And then again, feel free to take advantage of Enhance and Sky Enhancer. And look at that beautiful sky brought to life. It's really cool. All right, let's go ahead here and try another photo. I think this is a good one. And I'll jump into Erase. There's our tools and remove power lines. It'll analyze the image and attempt to remove the power lines. Now, again, if it doesn't get everything, you can always touch it up with the brush. That really did a nice job though. I like it. I'll just take this little bit out here, left bracket for smaller brush. It's not technically a power line, but I don't like that. It cleans it up nicely. And you can continue to work on any other types of objects that you don't want in the scene. Remember the erase tool is a content aware erase. So it's very flexible to let you take out other parts 
the clone stamp tool, not yet a part of the Luminar Neo early release, but that will be coming. But that does let you go in if you need to refine things and you can brush them out like I did there, taking the pole out and all evidence of the power lines. All right, so those are the three new major features that are ready to ship, but there are a bunch of other things that are coming. So let's go over what's missing, what's been removed, and what's still to come. All right, first up, what's missing? There are some things that aren't quite ready yet and are not included with the Luminar Neo early release, but I have reached out to the company and confirmed which of these are coming back and which things aren't expected to make the jump. So in the what's missing category, a bunch of tools are still missing. No dodge and burn, no clone and stamp. Most of the portrait tools are not yet active. Portrait bokeh AI, body AI, face AI. Plus, you're not able yet to use third-party Photoshop plugins in Luminar Neo. That is a feature, though, that the company has confirmed that it will be bringing back that was in Luminar 4. So you will be able to use select Photoshop plugins inside of Neo, but that's not ready yet. Other things that are still missing, you won't find an editing histogram, but it is coming back. No ability to transform the image in 3D space. No eyedropper tool for setting a custom white balance in the develop tool. And you can't flip or flop or rotate images yet in crop. You can use cropping itself, but you can't actually rotate preset amounts or flip the image side to side. Inside the mood tool, as you hover over the different LUTs, it won't update in real time. You saw that as I was editing earlier. And you don't really have undo and redo functionality while you're editing yet and the revert to original doesn't usually work. You can go into the individual edit section and reset things, but the revert to original command is currently disabled to do this globally. So you'll have to go in and kind of turn them off one at a time or make a change. And the entire preset engine is missing. So there's no built-in presets. You can't save a preset. You can't sync two images together. You can't copy and paste adjustments. It's not yet really ready for those high volume speed workflows. Again, it's an early access version, so you can try out some of this new technology and offer feedback to the Luminar team. On macOS, you'll find that the right click menu doesn't always work. The undo functionality and masking doesn't work, and you can't really do an erase if you've applied a vignette and you might see some things show up incorrectly inside of the edit tab. Windows users, crop AI is not yet working. You may not see the ability to do a sky replacement quite yet. You can't export multiple files. You're gonna see some issues using the develop module. Uh, there will be some delays as you try to use the erase tool and you're not able to use any plugins yet and there are no keyboard shortcut keys. I know, long list. Again, early access, it's supposed to be shipping in about a month, month and a half. So just keep in mind that they're not saying they're done yet. And you cannot yet use this as a plugin, but we're supposed to be able to use it with Photoshop, Lightroom Classic, Photos for Mac OS, and Microsoft Photos. That functionality is not currently active, nor will you find this early access version in the Microsoft or the Apple Store. That's okay, it's not yet released, it's 0 0.9. But there are a couple of things that have been removed and I gotta admit, I'm not crazy about all of these. You might wanna provide some feedback as well. A big one is the ability for a split screen to compare. So you can't actually put side by side the before and after or drag it left and right to change where that split is to see things. This is one of my favorite features in most photo editors, including Luminar AI and Luminar 4, and it's not currently set to be a part of Luminar Neo. So all you have is a before and after toggle, not a before and after compare view. So I'm gonna be submitting feedback, maybe you want to as well. The export modules to 500px and Flickr are removed. So if you rely on this, you're gonna to have to export and then manually upload to those sites. Uh, they currently do not have those export modules slated to be a part of the program. But again, there is the opportunity to provide feedback if they're important to you. 
Photoshop Elements support was dropped. Photoshop Elements support was also dropped from Luminar AI. It has not come back with Luminar Neo, but it was a part of Luminar 4. So it's officially not a supported plugin. And the augmented sky tool has removed. So no more giraffes in your clouds. Seriously though, this tool won't really be needed once we get the layers engine where you can add in objects and move them around. But for now, it is a removed feature and we don't yet have layers. So you won't have the augmented sky tool. And also no local adjustment brushes. Again, that's gonna be taking the place with layers and you have the ability to reuse tools multiple times. But until that comes back, no layers, that means no texture overlays. So all of those things are currently missing. And so if you do work with layers, overlays, or objects, all of that is gone. It will come back, but the augmented sky tool itself will not make a return. Again, you wanna give feedback, just click that little talk bubble up next to Luminar Neo and submit it. There's a survey and the ability to add your own comments. Please turn that in. Plus you can jump into the Luminar Insiders community for those of you that belong and leave some comments there for them. Okay, so what is still to come? Well, there's a lot more to Neo that you haven't seen yet. I've actually had a chance to see it, play with it a little bit, but it's not ready to be put out there into the wild. But let me walk you through what you can expect to get and when you can expect to get it. First up, this is the early access version. So again, dust spots removal, relight, power lines, new user interface, a lot of the tools, cool. But in the main release there in February, you'll get presets, layers, overlays, and Luminar Share. And then in the first free update, that's where Mask AI and Portrait Background Removal come in. These are some of the features I am most excited about, particularly Mask AI, but all of them are useful, and I wanna walk you through what you can expect. So with version one, which is currently expected in February, this is what we know. Presets, presets will come back. We don't have them right now, we've already talked about them, but they're going to be a part of the released version. Also, layers. This is really cool. Luminar 4 had layers. Luminar AI did not. Luminar Neo restores the use of layers and actually builds upon it. So layers are pretty cool. This is allowing you to combine multiple images together. Layers can also be raw files. So you can load in raw files and have full access to the develop module for each. You can use blending modes, masks, opacity to create collages or composite effects. So creativity is really what layers are all for. So you can mix things together, backgrounds, foregrounds, color grades. And here's just an example of using it to enhance an image and add different elements to really bring it to life. You can see the before versus the after, changing the color, the time of day, the shadows, adding some birds to the scene. So with layers here, this is gonna give you some flexible compositing ability and allow you to create composited images. Now, what I'm showing you here is not the final user interface. This is just some mockups that Skylum has provided so we can let you see what this is gonna look like, but it gives you an idea of how you can have multiple objects and each of those objects or photos can be combined together with masks and such. This will open up some pretty cool things. And you can take these layers and combine them with paint masks, radial masks, gradient masks, and luminosity masks. This will be coming back to Luminar with the update one. So not in the February bill, but in the one that comes, I don't have an exact date. So let's just say spring. So this is coming first in winter, and then the update, we'll call it spring. So that's probably when you'll see it. But to get you jump started, we're also expected to have a library of overlays plus the ability to add your own. So overlays are gonna give you content that'll help you kind of explore the use of layers and mixing things together. So it's a nice jump start for those of you who don't have a lot of background. Here we have a photo and we can layer in foreground masks creating this perspective. We could take an image and layer in a window to make it feel like we're looking out into the world. This is really for creativity, folks. It's not reality, but you can tweak, you can composite, you can add, and you can be subtle or dramatic. Here, for example, 
changing out the sky with the Replace Sky tool, and then layering in some elements like a moon and a little bit of a foreground branch to create a sense of depth. So this just gives you that ability to tell a story in new ways and to add things to a photo that you wanted to have in the original photo but couldn't. Maybe it was a new moon and it wasn't the type that you wanted or the sky it wasn't the time of day. You can tweak things because sometimes you can't actually get it in camera. Again, always a fan of getting it in camera first, but if you want to enhance or modify, you can do that with layers. And those overlays are just gonna jumpstart things. It's gonna give you a collection that you can work with. Next up, Luminar Share. This is a new mobile app from Skylum. Now, it's not an editor, it's a sharing utility, but it does a couple of cool things. Let me walk you through what's expected. So with Luminar Share, it's designed to make it easy to transfer your images from your laptop or desktop right to the mobile device so they're ready to take with you or share to social networks or other services. It makes it really simple to publish. Anything that your phone can share to, Luminar Share can share to. So that means not just social networks, but maybe you're posting something to an internal network or Slack. You can do that. Maybe you want to drop it into a document. You could do that. This lets you take your photos and instantly share them to any other mobile app that the sharing services are supported on your iOS or Android phone. So it is a mobile app that's gonna work with the desktop application and it makes it easy to sync and share photos. This is a free app, but it's only useful if you have Luminar Neo. So it won't cost you anything extra, but if you download it and you don't have Neo, it's not gonna do you much good. So what happens here is you'll be able to get it on the Google Play Store or the iOS App Store. It's a free download. And it makes it easy to transfer images to your phone wirelessly. You don't have to plug the phone in, you don't have to export files and then sync or add them to your media library and then sync them with the phone. It's just a simple push. And the images will transfer from the computer to the mobile device or you could transfer images off of your mobile device to your computer for that more advanced editing. Another thing that's kind of cool, this reminds me a lot if you've ever worked with a tool like Figma, which is a design tool in Figma Mirror, you can actually see your photos as you edit right on the smartphone screen. So if you're optimizing this to publish to say Instagram or a social media network and you wanna see what it's gonna actually look like on the phone, you could do so. Remember, a lot of phones actually have P3 color space or have the HDR displays or the XDR displays, and maybe your computer doesn't. This gives you the ability to actually preview it on that amazing screen. So I could put my iPad Pro next to my computer and watch it on that amazing screen to see what it's gonna look like for some folks on social media and actually update and edit. But what's cool here is it's totally secure. So it's creating a device-to-device -device network. You just take a device out, scan a QR code, and the two are gonna pair. There's no need to send things up to the cloud. There's no need to plug in a wire or export files and then drag them to a third-party service. It just creates a device-to-device -device network. So when you have your phone or your tablet near your computer, you'll just point it at that QR code and make a pair. And then once it's paired and the two devices are on, it's simple. You can mirror or push over images when you're ready to edit. So you're probably wondering, when are you gonna get those things I just mentioned? Well, the Luminar team did put out a statement and it looks like things have been pushed back a little bit more. Some of you were expecting early February, maybe end of January. Well, they're saying they need a little more time. They haven't committed to an exact date, but here's what they officially say. Skylum's goal is to ensure the best quality for Luminar Neo and to be transparent about our roadmap. That's good. It's nice to know what they're thinking and that they're letting us know what's happening. The development team is working around the clock to bring you the most satisfying version of Luminar Neo possible. That's why they're taking feedback. They actually gave us access to some of the technology early so we could provide feedback about working with the new tech as well as new user interface. So they're asking for a little bit of patience and they wanna make sure that everything is ready. So they've moved it to the end of winter. Now, it still says on the website February. So I think they're planning on delivering it in February. And for those of you that were ordering in the first, I think it was 30,000 copies were called Early Bird. They did say that you are gonna get it a week earlier than everyone else. 
and that's the full version, the 1.0 version. So just keep that in mind. This is not yet shipped. The early access version is version 0.9.1. So that means that you still don't have a 1.0 product, but that's okay. Your money back guarantee does not kick in until that full version is shipped. So you can also see a little bit more of this on the website. If we go to the FAQ section, you'll see when will Luminar Neo be available. Here's that statement requesting patience. And it says that early birds is expected to be a week prior to the main release in February 2022. Expected means they plan to ship it in February. Of course, there is this giant open period of feedback. So if the feedback goes a different way or there's needs to make changes or need to fix things, that might change. But the expected shipping date is set for February 2022. Now, update one, no date set yet, but it is promised to be a free update. This is gonna give you luminosity masks, which are cool, allow you to make selections and hide areas based upon their brightness values. This is something we had in Luminar a long time ago, but it went away and now it's back. And we've got the ability for mask AI. I'm really excited by this. You're gonna see why. And portrait background removal for doing compositing effects. So luminosity masks, these are built into some of Skylum's other tools. You might've seen them inside of earlier versions of say Aurora HDR or much long ago, like Luminar 2018, but these are quite useful and they're coming back. They're expected with update one. So that's version 1.1. Mask AI, this is really cool. Mask AI allows you to make transparency selections or selections to be used on your adjustments themselves based upon the content of your photo. And it's really cool. These AI masks are very unique. I do know that other people have released some AI masking tools, but none of them are like this. Sure, there's AI masks where you brush what you don't want and what you want, and then it calculates, or there's the ability to make some basic selections on a person or a sky, and that's pretty much it. Well, this goes way further. It actually looks at the photo, identifies what's there, and lets you make selections. So this is really useful for those of you that want to tell visual stories. So for example, here in this picture, again, this is a mock-up of the user interface. It recognized that there was a sky and that there was some other areas here like vegetation, man-made surface and vehicle. So you can go through and actually select the different areas of the image. And you see here with each click, it's able to target the object itself. This allows you to do things like select the road so you can put more texture into it or brighten up just the road. You can actually combine selections too to select more than one area. And you're free to use your paintbrush tool, your gradient masks, your radial masks, your luminosity masks to combine these to make new masks. So this gives you super precise control over defining where adjustments are applied or how transparency is applied. And it's pretty cool that you can actually combine this together to get results. So in this case, for example, we can change the road and the car with one operation. Now, these masks are really useful for creative editing. I like to use this to limit how tools are gonna to be applied to specific areas. It lets you be super precise with your edits. You can also do really accurate masks for compositing images. And you can use these AI masks to drive the selection, but still use other masking tools to refine the selection. So it's very, very robust. So this is what I'm told is expected. Expected means very likely to come. So this is the list I was given of what you can expect to see in mask AI. Portrait masks, sky masks, that's cool. So Adobe has portrait and sky masks, but the list keeps going where their list stops water masks, mountains, architectures and buildings, vegetation, natural ground surfaces and man-made surfaces like roads and sidewalks, vehicles. Other ones are in the works and are expected to come. And so they'll keep enhancing this technology as the AI gets trained to recognize more and more things. So this is really cool. Imagine a shot like this in Times Square 
the ability to just not only select the sky to dial in the perfect color, but then the ability to go after the vehicles so you can color correct those or adjust just their exposure. The ability to select the road surface to bring out texture and to add depth. It's really cool. And as we start to look at other things like blurring and glows and exposure effects, you're gonna be able to do some really cool color grading and image refinement with these that you just couldn't do with other tools. All right, portrait background removal. Think of it as chroma key, the ability to swap the background without the need to shoot on green screen. So this is designed to let you isolate an object and then take advantage of the layers engine to swap things out. So it'll allow you to recognize humans and then remove them from the background. And it can handle complex areas like hair and other areas with partial transparency. There will be the ability to refine it, but as you can see here, we could take a photo, quickly isolate the subject, and then using our layers engine, we could put the photo over new backdrops. You'll be able to refine and make changes and use color grading tools to make it look believable. So this is really cool. You'll be able to extract portraits and use the layers engine to put the pieces together. So this gives you some flexibility and we've all spent a lot of time in virtual meetings and swapping out the backgrounds behind us, well, you can actually do this in real life. Maybe take a virtual vacation since it doesn't seem like a lot of us are getting to travel as much as we like these days. But jokes aside, this does give you flexibility. And even if you don't just want to, say, change the background, you could use this to further control the background, maybe color grading it or manipulating it. So it gives you some pretty awesome options here as you look to work with the photos. So, you've been told that Luminar Neo processes images in an entirely different way. As we're working with a photo, each step of the image is captured. So remember, as we start to modify a photo, it's gonna actually embed those changes. So let's go ahead here, I'm gonna take this image of mine, and I wanna process. Well, I start with the raw module here, and you see that it is a non-destructive raw develop. So I applied Nikon's recommended profile there, maybe dialed in the smart contrast and the, the shadows and highlights like I would with a traditional tool. You'll see that the develop module has a lot of other controls that have been moved to it. This includes the ability to enhance the color, tweak the white balance, you know, balance all those things out that you normally would, and the ability to remove lens distortion, etc. Right, so all that stuff is built in here so we can enhance the photo. That's great. But it is then closed and applied. So if I go on to the next tool, say enhance, that has been processed. And now I decide to add some structure. Well, maybe I go back to enhance and you see everything's reset because when I apply it again, it's adding a second instance of that tool. You'll see it here in the edit module where you see all the edits stacked up. This lets you see what's happened with each of those effects. Well, the benefit is when you go to export now to say disk, this is gonna go a lot faster because it's been generating those effects as you go. So instead of having to do each effect one at a time or as you move a slider waiting for the other effect to update, this is just a lot quicker with the overall processing. You see it finished. So again, that was real time, nothing was taken out, nothing was adjusted. If I go in and I say, oh, you know, I wanna refine this, and oh, I, I think I want a more robust sky in there, a little bit more action with the sky, I can swap it out. And then as we start to refine things here, let's say some scene relighting, I can just adjust the overall lighting of that scene to better match the different skies, giving the flexibility here as I make changes for the whole scene to change. And again, we'll export this one to disk. And even though we're using that relatively complex effect with the sky enhancement and replacement, you'll see that it runs through. And it's a much faster process because each of the results has been getting calculated as we went, so you don't have the same sort of export times that you used to have with other versions of Luminar. Now, this is still being refined. It's gonna be made faster, but again, there was the real-time speed 
of the actual export. So I didn't cut anything out, I didn't speed anything up. That was the whole process. So you will see performance improvements with more performance improvements to come. It all comes down to how Luminar Neo is processing those photos. So a traditional editor worked one of two ways. If you were using something like Photoshop, it generally would be applying and modifying the pixels with each edit. Every tool you applied processed the previous image. And while this was faster and worked really well with slower computers or the original types of computers we had, it made it more difficult to go back and make changes. You'd have to save different versions along the way or hack it and work with things like smart filters. Now, we had a lot of images out there that are parametric. Luminar AI, Luminar 4, Lightroom, On1, One, Capture One, these tools. Well, these tend to have parameters that you can edit and all of the editings are stored in little sidecar files. And basically, when you apply them, they all get applied at once. And this affects your export time. But it does give you flexibility and everything is non-destructive. Luminar Neo combines these two methods into a new approach. Now, they don't have a name for this other than the Luminar Engine, but this is what they do. They basically take both methods and put them together. So every change happens as you go, but it's not destructive. So a smart edit history that you'll find over in the edit section stores it. You've got basically infinite levels of undo. You can go back and make changes and the overall editing environment becomes faster and more stable. It also will allow you to change things and you can actually go back and reset an individual tool, turn a tool off, completely change its parameters or its effect, put new tools in there, and you never actually lose this. When you quit and reopen the program, all your edits are there so you can pick off where you resumed or make a change because you wanna go in a new direction. What else can you expect? Well, there are technologies that are gonna be built into Neo that you've seen before. I just wanna recap some of those previous Luminar technologies so you know if they're there or not there. Accent AI, Structure AI, gonna be there and are in the early access version. Face AI, Skin AI, and Iris AI. Well, Face AI and Iris AI, which affects the eyes, it's part of Face AI. Both of those are not in the early access version, but will be included in 1.0. That's going to make it easy to enhance those pictures. Body AI, currently missing, expected with version 1.0. And this will make it easy to reshape. Atmosphere AI, in the early access build. Sky AI, in the early access build, some issues for Windows users. Portrait Bokeh AI, currently missing, but slated to be included in version 1.0. All right, so where does this all come together? I encourage you, if you haven't done so, to pre-order Luminar Neo. Head on over to learnluminar.com. You'll find a bunch of tutorials and resources up there, as well as the ability to click and get a special price on a bundle and be able to get our free training bundle. If you like my tutorials or resources by buying through the site, you get us a little bit of a kickback. It's how we help keep the lights on but you actually get a lower price with extra add-ons. So be sure to check that out. If we put these side by side, a couple things to note. Luminar Neo, meant to be a creative image editor. Luminar AI, an AI powered photo editor, just to speed things up as you work. Luminar Neo is great for photographers and creative artists and people who really wanna explore their creativity using things like layers and more creative editing approaches. Luminar AI is a nice, fast editor. It wasn't a replacement for Luminar 4. It really sped things up with suggested edits and templates. Luminar Neo features purpose-driven AI tools and new AI masking technology that really helps with targeting effects and layers. Luminar AI is really meant to be fast and allows you to quickly synchronize images and use templates. Luminar Neo is meant to be extendable and it's a platform that Skylum says they intend to keep building on and adding new features because of its very modular nature and each tool is applied as you close it. They have the ability to add extra modules and things that you'll be able to put in there in the future with upgrades that will add new capabilities. And they do have multiple updates and upgrades. Updates are free, upgrades are paid, planned that will add benefits. 
Luminar AI is currently considered feature complete, although they did ship a new update, update five recently. This means that you'll still see new things added from time to time that might refine something or support more raw formats or add compatibility. For example, they released a Windows 11 update and a Microsoft Photos update, as well as some new camera support just last month. That's cool. And it's kept current, but it's not expected to grow in complexity. Luminar Neo, designed to allow for complex edits. Luminar AI, designed to make photo editing easy and get the job done. So you can have both on your system. Kind of like how some people use Photoshop versus Lightroom for different jobs. You can use these together if you need to and start in one and then export your image and open it in the other. Not a big deal. But most people will likely migrate fully to this. So that's fine. You'll be able to actually do this. And the team has stated that they will be shipping a utility to convert your Luminar AI templates into presets for Luminar Neo and tools to help migrate libraries that you have in Luminar 4 or Luminar AI into Luminar Neo. Now, you could, of course, import the photos today, zero issues. It's just that you can't migrate all of your previous edits. So if you want to move things you've done in the past and keep all of those edits, then you'll need that migration tool. No date has been set for these tools yet, but they have committed that they will come. Why would you switch or add Luminar Neo? Well, it's going to give you more AI power tools. It's going to give you the ability to use layers starting with version 1.1. I do love that even right now in the early access build, you can flexibly reorder the tools or apply them in different stacking orders or reuse a tool more than once. Like you saw, I was able to use the color tool there and really use color harmony twice for color contrast, which is something I could never do before. And you're going to have those AI powered masks in update 1.1 and new performance boost as we go. So if you are on Luminar 4, I would definitely suggest migrating to Luminar Neo. You're going to find a lot of capabilities and enhancements. If you're on Luminar AI, I think Luminar Neo is also a great move. Just keep in mind that it is more complex than Luminar AI with more capabilities. So there might be times when you want to just rely on templates or quickly sync a bunch of photos together with the Luminar AI tool. Again, not a big deal. Both products, heck, all three products, or even all versions of Luminar can actually stay on your system and you can run them independently. Do keep in mind with this early access build, you don't have plugin support yet, so you can't use Luminar Neo with Photoshop, Lightroom, Photos for Mac OS, or Windows, but that will come with version 1.0. What do you need to run this? Pretty straightforward. Nothing's really changed on the system requirements. Do keep in mind, eight gigs of RAM is the minimum. You'll get a lot better performance with 16 gigs of RAM. And I find that more is better, but the team has stated that because each thing renders as you close each tool, that the performance is much better on systems with less RAM or processing power. Similar requirements there for Windows, eight gigs minimum, 16 gigs recommended. Windows 10 or newer, so make sure that you have a modern operating system. And it will work with Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, Photos for Mac OS, and Microsoft Photos. But it does not support Apple Aperture or Photoshop Elements officially, nor Affinity Photo, but many people have reported that they've been able to make the Photoshop plugin work in those two products. You'll just have to manually install it. And these are the languages that you could expect Luminar Neo to be available in. Now, a big thing to keep in mind with this early access version, if you make something cool, save it, export your work. That's because things are not finalized yet. So the Skylum team says, keep in mind that the edits can be lost as they update early access versions. So when you see an update come out because they've shipped it, well, make sure that you've exported things. If an update pops up saying, oh, would you like to update your software? If you haven't exported your files, don't run that update until you export your files. This way you've got them backed up and then you know that they're good and it is faster now. So you can still batch export or export them as you finish each version. And the best way to do this is as a high resolution TIFF file if you wanna keep this in an archival quality. That would look like this. Just select the image that you have and go to export the file. 
Here, look at your settings. If you don't see this by default, you might have to expand. Make sure you're seeing everything. It's all there. And look at what you're writing. For best results, TIFF file. And I would suggest either Adobe RGB or Profoto RGB. Adobe RGB is a little easier to work with. TIFF file is going to give you the highest quality. This compression, not a big deal. It'll save a little bit of disk space with virtually no change in appearance. So the LZW compression, it's three German names. It's like Lumpwig, Zigger, Wizard. <laughs> it's really strange, but it's basically the guys behind it. And I'm sure I got at least two of those names wrong, but feel free to look it up on Wikipedia. The depth here is key. 16-bit is going to give you that much more accurate color, particularly if you start with a RAW file. Highly recommend that 16-bit. Just target it and hit save. And in this case, I'm gonna write over the previous file and it sticks it out. Again, I'm just saving a new TIFF file here. The original raw file is untouched on my drive. And so this is making that new file. Lots of layers here, lots happening. Takes a few seconds, but much faster export times than we've seen in the past. And you can go on to the next image. Remember, the whole purpose of this build is to provide feedback, guys. So click that feedback button and provide the feedback here. This allows you to take a survey, let them know what you're thinking, give them some feedback about the product so they know what's on your mind. And I know that the team is absolutely reading this. So if you have opinions, share them. If you see issues, share them. But do it in that survey if possible because that's the one that's going directly to the engineering department. Okay, that's cool. I hope you guys found this helpful. My name's Rich Harrington, and this has been an unofficial but in-depth look at Luminar Neo Early Access. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to head on over to learnluminar.com to pick up that special bundle, and you'll get some extra freebies with it, as well as save on your upgrade or new purchase of Luminar Neo.